What's up guys? Let's talk a little bit today about people and the power of being around people. Um, this is for the entrepreneur, this is for the introvert, this is for the close-minded. Guys, I want to tell you the power very briefly of being around people and I want to give you some life perspective to really chew on because when this finally hit me, it was too late for me to really appreciate what I had when I had it. But um, in your life, guys, you know, let's just walk through a normal timeline of life. You're a kid, you grow up, you grow up, you become a young adult, then you move on and become an adult. You may or may not get married, you get a job, and that job goes on while you're in adulthood, and you will continue to either grow your family or live kind of an isolated life where you're just working a full-time job and then maybe doing a little something on the side. But guys, when you're a kid, you have the highest concentration and exposure to the largest amount of people that you will see every single day. You know, imagine like I'm 34 right now. So imagine if I go to a concert, I might see a few thousand people, right? But how often do I go to a concert? Almost never. I might see a, a couple hundred people if I go to the gym, but how often do I go to the gym? And if I go to the gym often, how many of those same faces am I going to see over and over at a certain point in time? It's really interesting. You know, when you're in middle school, you're around a few hundred people. When you get into high school, you're, you might be around a few thousand people. And then you go into college and you're in front of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. You might feel like you're in like uh, Rome or something, <laughs> like during the height of, uh, you know, the, the uh, Colosseum days and things like that. You're just like, wow, there's an overwhelming amount of people. And it's interesting because when you're a kid, you're always used to being around a lot of kids. Even when you're not at school, you might go to a park and see a lot of kids or you might have a big family or there's people in your neighborhood. There's really never downtime unless you might be upstairs in your room minding your own business. But when you're outside, you see kids and there's always a lot of kids and a big variety of them. And so it can be easy to take for granted the situation at hand because these are situations where when you're in school, you have this rare opportunity to be able to survey a lot of kids for these types of purposes. What type of people you might not like? What type of people you love? Who might be your short-term and long-term friends? Who might be your career mates? Who might be your associates and people you might network with in the future? People just from your town in general that you may want to know about. You, you begin to learn about families and, and uh, resources that are available to you. And you might find your, your spouse in school. And... Um, you, you, you build skills. You find people who are skilled at a bunch of different things. And so you could try a bunch of things. Everybody has information and they're in an age where they have unlimited amounts of time, unlimited amounts of resources, and they are in a place where it's a learning community, a collective learning community, and everyone's soaking up knowledge in some way, whether it's about material things, knowledge, etc. It's a plethora of learning and relationship building. And you don't quite realize in the moment that, hey, when I leave college and go out into the workforce, or I leave high school and go out into the workforce, I'm working almost the entire day, maybe around 100 or less people that I'm going to see all the time. And then if I have a family, that's all I'm going to see after that or my and my local church and things like that. And so you might only see a couple hundred people a week and you might only have deep relationship with 20 or less. And none of them are people who are in a learning community, kind of a, a renaissance of resource and information and networking as you have when you're in school. And so I want to just encourage anybody who's in high school or college or even just a young adult who has retained a lot of your relationships that you built in school, really cherish that moment because like you you won't be in a situation like that again <laughs> likely you know there might be a small percentage of people who you went to school with that get some type of 
influencer job or work in corporate America in a way where they're just around tons of people or maybe they move to New York or LA and so they they get to it, it gets to feel very much like a college atmosphere all the time but for the large majority of us our friendships our relationship circles get very small and very redundant and our life gets smaller we, our our goals get simpler and you know it's 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 longevity at that point with limited resources and so i just want to encourage you guys like i guess there's a couple ways to think about it one if you're still on the side of the fence where you're in school or you have access to these people build a lot of relationships um there's nothing fake or like disingenuous about trying to meet a lot of people and learn very briefly what they do, what they're interested in, what their personality is like, and just have a bunch of kind of, you know, arm's length relationships and begin surveying your community for people who may be your friends, your associates, people you might network with, people that are going into places that you might want to get information about, um, you know, the dating field, all kind of stuff, because you have the highest concentration of that. And so you have the highest odds of like, growing in that space and getting the most resources so that when you leave, you have a contact list of people who you've built connections with both arm's length relationships and then very deep connections with people um, that when you go, you, you'll retain those relationships. And so I think about that, like really cherish that moment and survey. Don't just find a couple of friends and you know what, that's all I need. And you kind of block off and say, you know what, I'm just going to focus on my school and the little bit of relationships I have. It's like, you can do that, but you're really passing a huge opportunity here. That's not going to be available to you. And when you go to need those resources or those relationships later on, you're going to be digging from a lot smaller of a Petri dish, you know, a smaller supply. It's going to be a smaller ration for you. And I don't think many people count the cost of that. Now, the other side of the coin is if you're an adult and, you know, you, you got a family or you're a single adult or you're just in a space where now you're in the nine to five grind, you've got the consistent job, you don't have a lot of free time and you're not out in the world in a way where you can be around a lot of people, um, the encouragement is to start getting creative. You know, if, if you don't have uh, a, a network of people for resources, if you don't have a good friendship circle, if you don't have good, you know, spiritual accountability or a good local church, you know, start surveying now, you know, uh, because especially if you're introverted or you don't really like doing that stuff, the longer you wait, the more regret you're going to have because you're eventually going to need those friendships. You're eventually going to need uh, those resources and information and people who can help you out and point you in the right direction. Um, you're going to need to be in a good church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like there's just a bunch of like really practical things. You know, if you want a spouse, you're going to need to be able to survey a group of people and narrow a list down on people you might want to inquire and, and date and, and survey the, the dating field. Um, really start thinking about that and, and get yourself out there. Put yourself out there. Um, and again, this isn't about if you're an introvert becoming an extrovert. This is about things that you practically will need in your life and being in a good position to fulfill those needs. Um, and to do them well, like, it's like if over here, there's a hundred people I can survey just because I'm introverted, I'm going to go stand over here and survey two people because I just don't even want to deal with it. Okay. We'll be willing to live with the consequences of it taking a lot longer for you to find those friendships and, and that spouse and, and those communities and learning groups and peer groups that, that you actually desire. You know, it's one thing if you don't want that stuff, but, uh, most people I know, are trying to look for people who can point them to resources, have good friends, have good spiritual accountability, have a good learn multiple learning communities, um, have different family friends circles, etc. Um, so yeah, there there's a, a power in understanding where you are, but even if you're past that school phase, I just want to encourage you that now that we have the internet, there's really no excuse and. You know, there's this weird purity culture 
when it comes to like um, relationship building, where it's like people don't want to build relationships online and they, they don't want to put themselves out there online and yet they don't have these communities locally around them and they really have no other choice because they're stuck in the house, but they don't want to go online because they feel like somehow that's less genuine. It's like, it's all a tool. Like if you need to go online to find some communities of people just like you, and hopefully that blossoms into a relationship, a relationship that can become localized or just have more depth, then why not? Like there's people in my church who have met online and and met each other on dating sites and then through further courting wound up being married and have been married for 10, 20 years. Like that's a normal thing. But if you're going to be stuck in the house and be close minded to the resources around you, then man, you're going to have a lot of temptation to have regret as life goes on and your resources get limited. So I hope that encourages you that like, you know, if there's any goals that you have, um, the more people kind of, I don't want to say at your disposal, but the more people you kind of have around you that you've surveyed through. And this is in marketing, there's a term we refer to called like ecosystems where you want to go swim in an environment of people who are either like-minded or goal-oriented in the same direction as you because as you do your life in your lane around these other fish that are swimming, it's just osmosis that you you guys will cross paths and you might build some powerful relationships in the midst of that. But if you're just kind of in a cave doing your own thing, the, the journey is going to be harder. It's going to be less fulfilling because there's less context. You're going to have less resources. You're going to have less real perspective on where you are because you don't know like what the progress looks like despite the people around you. You don't know if you're like taking the long road when you could have a shortcut in front of you. Um, you could be missing out on a lot of great friendships uh, and, and relationships. So um, just don't take for granted um, people, man. And it can start off as simple as like just serving people. You know, find environments to be around people and just see what happens. And don't let one scenario dictate, well, oh, you know what? I tried that once. I went in that community. It just took too long and I didn't find anyone out of it. And it led to like two years of, of wasting my time. No, 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 no. You don't don't lose sight of what the goal is and, and the overall point of that being around people, more people, is going to allow you to survey to kind of get where you want to go with these varying goals in your life. And don't let the circumstance stop you from doing the productive thing, which is surveying people, because you're going to be surveying people, um, you know, small or at scale Regardless, you can't just ignore people and then expect to find friendships, to find community circles and peer groups and learning circles and in good churches and your spouse and etc. You will not find that unless you go outside and start meeting some people. So you might as well scale up. If you're an introverted person, scale up temporarily or scale up as much as you need to and understand that if you're not meeting your goals, then maybe you need to scale up. And uh, just, you know, prayerfully consider what, what the situations God would have in front of you and prepare yourself for those occasions. And uh, you'll notice that you can skip the line on a lot of things and get your life moving forward a lot more, a lot quicker and a lot faster with each person that you bump into and learn something new and build that relationship here and cut that tie off here and you know and it's all it's all moving you forward um so you know take the losses with the wins and move forward and keep the goal in mind and you will have a fresh perspective of what um the the power of being around a lot of people can do for you love you guys have a great night